कुरूप हो तुम इस कटुता से कह क्या एक घमंडी राजा दिल में खटास ली है मन में प्रतिशोध की आग ली है चल पड़ा वो जवान वो और कोई नहीं बल्कि चाणक्य था एक ऐसे व्यक्ति की खोज में वो निकल पड़ा जो उत्तेज धाड़स और धैर्य से भरपूर हो एक राजा की असली पहचान उसका अहंकार नहीं शौर्य और गौरव होता है ये बता गया वो पूरे भारत को वो और कोई नहीं बल्कि चाणक्य था एक घमंडी राजा को अपनी गद्दी से हटाना और एक बालक को हीरे की तरह तराश कर उसे एक महान योद्धा बनाना ये हर ज्ञानी के बस का नहीं होता है चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य को अखंड भारत का राजा बना के मौर्य राजवंश का आगमन करना सिर्फ वही कर सकता है वो दिखा गया जमाने को कि वो कोई भीड़ में से एक नहीं सिर्फ एक चाणक्य था खुद राजा ना बनना पर राजा और राज्य की सारी राजनीति बड़ी चतुराई से संभालना उस तेज और बुद्धि का बल से भी कई ज्यादा मोल होता है वो दिखा गया सदियों को वो और कोई नहीं चाणक्य था भाग्य उसका साथ देता है जो हर संकट का सामना करके भी अपने लक्ष्य के प्रति दृढ़ रहता है वो बता गया सबको उसके जैसा और कोई नहीं क्योंकि वो चाणक्य था ज्ञानियों में सबसे बड़ा ज्ञानी चतुरों में सबसे अधिक चतुर आज भी जब उसका नाम लिया जाता है हर कोई चौकन्ना हो जाता है ऐसा प्रभाव इतिहास से लेके अब तक क्या किसी और का देखा है बड़े बड़े राजा डरते जिससे देश विदेश में चर्चा होती जिसकी वो रुतबा वो आंखों में चमक वो चाल की नजर की तेजी वो हौसला और अपनी नीतियों पर आत्मविश्वास कोई चाहकर भी उस जैसा ना बन पाया हाँ वो और कोई नहीं चाणक्य था Hey guys this is Ritvi Sawant and welcome back to Ritvi Talks I hope you guys are enjoying this chilly weather around and pardon my voice if it sounds a little affected Today's topic is about what we must learn from Chanakya Let's go for it Let's start with who Chanakya really was Well, he is someone who needs an introduction though. But a great teacher, philosopher, economist and a statesman who wrote the Indian political treatises, the Arthashastra, the science of politics and economics, a great thinker, diplomat, smartest of his time, a clever strategist, a damn good politician and a pioneer in the field of economics and political science. so intellectual and also shrewd that he could apparently move an entire dynasty and got chandragupta maurya throned to be the new king of akhand bharat this is all what we generally recognize chanakya as but what we often forget to realize is his learnings his beliefs with which he was titled as one of the greatest minds of his time It's been ages since he passed away but what he left behind in the name of legacy was his knowledge and strategies his spark his personality his way of walking confidently apart the strength or should i say the weightage in his words that no man can bend is what made chanakya what he really was many tried but none after him could copy or inherit the same Okay so shrewd intellectual intelligent cunning smart everything that he was his greatest asset was his sharp mind and that is what reflects profoundly in all his teachings and quotes as well if you have ever read the books 
चाणक्य नीति कॉपरेट चाणक्य और सेवन पिलर्स ऑफ बिजनेस एज चाणक्य स्पीक्स यू रियलाइज एट वेरियस इंस्टेंसेस दैट चाणक्य वॉज एक्चुअली राइट बट यू कॉन्ट पुट द सेम थॉट प्रोसेस एट ईच स्टेप एंड एवरीवेयर The management lovers made him a guru of management by writing several books on his teachings correlating it to the business and corporate setup some just blindly idolized him when we idolize someone not all qualities are to be taken very seriously every human on earth good or bad smart smartest or dumb has both sides to their personality right even gods had some good and bad sides to them and considering chanakya the master of kootniti or the way it's famously called the chanakya niti it's no hidden fact that one can't always be sweet simple and honest that brings me to drive your attention to some of the quotations said by chanakya and here's my understanding of it so let's try and decode them and see if they can add some value in our lives Number 1 a person should not be too honest straight trees are cut first they say honesty is the best policy and we might have heard about it a zillion times till date but being too honest can be extremely dangerous for us being too honest can land us in trouble if we don't know where to be and where to stop we often get carried away in the wake of conversations without thinking whom we are speaking to and how it can turn out to be dangerous for ourselves it's like a husband and wife are having a nice chatty conversation and the husband gets carried away being too comfortable while returning from a restaurant after a nice cozy dinner and suddenly he says oh that veggie baby your cooking sucks while making that one the chef here made it so nicely no my mom used to make it the same way done <laughs> end of the day for you or it's like you and your boss are sitting together and suppose your boss has got a little comfortable and is is, is in a chatty and a joking mood and you accidentally drop the truth bomb oh yeah boss you know you also once said you didn't know about that code in our program i felt how does he even claim himself to be an iit grad oh oh and suddenly the whole environment turns out to be silent sounds danger <laughs> because the shift of energies was so quick well these were just small lighter real life examples but the point being if you end up disclosing too much or oversharing with utmost honesty signals a lot of unwanted signboards ahead on the other instance in the book your last mistake your best teacher it's clearly mentioned on how you can win an almost lost battle by simply bluffing about a few things and still come out as triumphant take a note this one principle is what every bureaucrat of the world strongly abides by point number 2 always keep your anger in control because it's the greatest weapon to be used by your enemy against you if you are a close follower of any form of sports or cricket you would know how badly the opponents provoke only so that the players would lose their cool and play falsely or in rage this happens in our daily lives as well after all a disturbed mind can prove to be your biggest weakness and the biggest strength for your opponents and enemies remember your opponents are always waiting for that one window to enter in your sphere and destroy you a lot of times it happens that people who are short tempered their inner circle and people who usually work with them are very well aware of their this behavioral pattern hence it becomes easy for anyone who has studied them to bend them down targeting that particular weakness hence it's an advice to work on controlling your rage and anger and understand that 
this may be a trick to get what your opponent wants. If you let them win here, you can't win anywhere else. Number three, a man is great by deeds, not by birth. You might be a king at birth, as they say, born with a silver spoon. But if your deeds are cruel and hopeless, you won't ever flourish in life. You might be a saver, a janitor at birth. But if your deeds, your karma is all pure and clean, heart full of gold, you will always, always win in life. You would not just flourish, but also win your fellow beings' hearts. Remember, having support of your near and dear ones, family or friends or everyone around or at times people who don't even know you but know of you is a wealth in itself. Number four, learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make them all yours. You saw the other person fall in that pit right in front of your eyes but you didn't stop yourself from walking on the same path. The person who doesn't learn from others' mistakes will eventually waste his life learning from his own. Or, wait till you also fall in that pit unless you live after that too, for which you should have been well aware of. Life is too short and it's better to live checking upon a good referral points from what others have done and what they have not. Sometimes what works for them might work for you, but it's also possible that what didn't work for them works for you, or maybe vice versa. Certain mistakes can be clearly avoided at the first go. Some learn, some don't. But don't reinvent the cycle and definitely do apply the lessons learned. The biggest Guru Mantra that Chanakya stood by was Never share your secrets with anybody. It will destroy you. Outside energy throws off negative frequency on your goals. Hence, never share your goals until accomplished or your innermost secrets with anybody. Chanakya strongly believed in these as a part of political diplomacy. It comes as an extension of not trusting anybody around because you never know who is your friend or who is your enemy. Often this used to be very prominent in those times while battling for dynasties and thrones. Then it became useful for politicians in general. And these days it's very much relatable to the corporate world and real life too. It's not called having trust issues. It's called being careful. After all, we all live for our own selves and our families, right? Being a little selfish and being a little cautious will save you a lot of time, emotion and energy as well. Imagine you have this wonderful side hustle idea and you shared it with your so-called friends or co-workers. One of them understood the concept very well or maybe he or she was smart enough to add some more points of improvisation to it and he takes it ahead. Done. Your idea was taken by someone else, copied and published, leaving you in splits. Number six. If you want to overpower the world with one action, then put restraint on your tongue speaking ill of others. The purity of speech, of mind, of sense and of a compassionate heart are needed by the one who desires to rise to the divine platform enough to rule. Much before the king rules the kingdom, it's important to rule the hearts of people living in the kingdom itself. This is what every kingmaker would preach. A bad king is the one who speaks foul of others, is rude and doesn't respect anybody. Such individual can never rule for a longer time. But the one who speaks good language, good words, even if angry, knows what to speak and how, is the one who always can get ahead with Elan and his head high. Hence, a controlled tongue 
calculated words and a calm head is advisable by Chanakya if you wish to lead the clan. Number 7. Never let anybody bigger or greater than you overpower you. Eventually, people who get shot to fame or got a sudden inflow of money or rose to sudden power, success has already got into their head. They think themselves greater than anybody around. Now, if you don't control your energy of feeling insecure or inferior in front of them, you are letting them overpower you. For example, while you are in a deal closure meeting and the client or the peer shows a superior attitude to you through his body language or through his words, he is going to rush you into a lot of unnecessary work because you portrayed yourself as a needy or a small person at the time of deal closure. But instead, if you maintained your stance of being an equal at the table that yeah, you mean business, the peer or the client would always be on a vibe check whenever he or she meets or deals with you next and also won't bother you much as well. Lastly, number 8. Keep everyone happy around, in business and in life. Let the fool be happy being a fool. Let the ringmaster be happy being a ringmaster. That is the key to a successful organization. As a leader, you can always try to push your team to great heights. But what would you do if the team member is happy being the lazy ass or a slow potato that he is? <laughs> You can't do much in there, right? Also, if you think your boss gets happy being kept updated about the latest happenings in the vicinity or news in general, like to badmouth about the other competitors, let him or her be. After a point, you gotta stop putting effort in teaching a bird to fly. Maybe he is happy thinking that he is a fish. While all this is happening around, you keep doing your job well and finding out better talents to do the same job you try to extract from the other person. As they say, a clear, focused mind, a sharp brain can take you to heights if you channelize your anger or resentment in right direction, keeping all the calm and control over your emotions. Is what all these principles and quotes by Chanakya actually sum up to. And that is what he tried to inculcate in Chandragupta Maurya and later in Chakravarti Ashoka too. But this is also one of the important teachings that most of us forget to infuse within us. The difference between a king and a kingmaker is that the kingmaker can shake the foundation because he is the one who makes the empire. King is made to rule but isn't of much power without the kingmaker. And Chanakya for sure did lay a headstrong example of being one hell of a kingmaker, isn't it? Well, the tough choice is, whom do you want to be? You can either be the king or a kingmaker. You can't be both. Think about it. <laughs> While I leave you on that note, happy living people, take care. <laughs>